I collected every manga that's part of Viz Media's Shonen Jump line. I have to talk about this. <laughs> Stay tuned. I'm sure that you probably have a couple of basic questions on your mind, uh, how and why, and I want to answer both of those questions before we jump in into actually taking a look at every single series that's in Viz Media's Shonen Jump line, um, because there's personal reason, I, I guess I would say, as to why I would want to do something like this. Um, to give this answer, I have to say, Shonen Jump manga in general are nostalgic for me. They're like a comfort food for me. It's like sitting back in a comfy chair, legs kicked up, warm blanket, by the fireplace, with a hot cup of cocoa, just letting all your worries melt away, relaxing, comforting. And that's because of what these series and what the Shonen Jump line has meant to me throughout the years. And it really goes back to 2003. This is the year that Viz Media had started their Shonen Jump line in the US. And they started this by publishing the monthly Shonen Jump magazine, which included a lot of different popular titles, especially titles that at the time were familiar to American audiences like Dragon Ball Z, Yu Yu Hakusho, and Yu-Gi-Oh. So my grandfather was at the grocery store, and as he was checking out, he saw one of those magazines on the rack, you know, next to like the Us Weekly and Entertainment Weekly and that kind of stuff. So my grandfather, knowing my interests, knowing that I was into anime, like really heavily into anime at the time, um, decided to grab it for me. Um, and he brought it home and he gave it to me the next time that I had visited. And, um, I was like, wow, this is super cool. And I started looking through it, reading the articles, reading the chapters of the stuff that I was familiar with. Um, it, and it was so cool because I had never really read much manga before that. My only exposure were from random chapters of like Pokemon manga. But aside from that, I'd never gotten to read the original source material for these series that I was already so obsessed with as a kid. So he would continue to buy me those magazines every month as they came out. He'd find them at the grocery store, get me the magazine, give it to me when I came to visit, and I would do the same thing. I'd read the stuff that I was familiar with and then I'd just shelf it and forget about it. Now, several months passed and eventually I decided, you know what, he's buying these magazines for me and I'm only reading about half of the stuff in there. I should probably read the rest of the material that's in these magazines. And so I did, I sat down and I read everything that was in all of the magazines that I had at that time, uh, which was a bunch of chapters of Akira Toriyama's series Sandland, Shaman King, Naruto, and One Piece. And those last two resonated so heavily with me in a way that nothing else ever had before. They were so familiar yet so different compared to all the other titles that I was reading at the time, which admittedly weren't much, but, but still. These characters were more relatable to me than the characters in these other titles I was reading because they were younger. They were around the same age that I was at this time. And they were going on adventures that were so different than what I had seen from Dragon Ball or from Yu Yu Hakusho. These were series that were focused on completely different types of characters, ninjas and pirates, going into these huge, different, diverse worlds that were unlike what I had seen before. And it was so exciting and I immediately got sucked in and obsessed with these series. 
So much so that actually my first volume of manga that I ever bought was One Piece Volume 1, because I fell so heavily in love with this world from the get-go and I wanted to have it in my collection. Now the volume one that I have one piece now is not the same volume one I had back then, um, but you get the point. It was the, That was the series that really started everything. So eventually the magazine started also publishing these preview chapters. There are preview chapters for series that were going to be published under the Shonen Jump line, but not in the magazine. And these were to get audiences excited for the upcoming releases so that hopefully they would buy in. And I tell you that this worked literally almost every time. Uh, on me and I wound up buying almost every single series from the Shonen Jump line as they were coming out. Now that wasn't all of what I was buying as far as manga goes. I was buying series from Tokyo Pop like Rave Master or Love Hina and I was also buying stuff from Dark Horse like Trigun. Um, but most of what I was buying did come from Viz Media's Shonen Jump line and those series were always the ones that I was the most excited about whenever each volume would come out. And I would continue to collect these titles and the Shonen Jump line would continue to make up the majority of what I was buying every month uh, throughout middle school, throughout high school, throughout college, and well into adulthood. And while my tastes have greatly expanded over the years, and I've definitely gotten a lot more into a lot of seinen series, a lot of more mature stuff, my heart really stays with shonen manga. In particular, those that come from the Shonen Jump line. I don't know what it is, but there's just some special something that those series have uh, as opposed to the shonen titles from other magazines, from other publishers. So in my adulthood, I would go back and I made it a mission to actually collect all of the different titles that were in the magazine. I had read all of Naruto, I had read all of One Piece, I had read all of Shaman King uh, previously, but I didn't own all of the, the actual volumes. So there was a point several years ago where I went by and bought every volume of each of those titles, every volume that I didn't already have. and. I was really happy with that. It was it was this comforting feeling that I had all the all the series that were in the magazine, the ones that were uh, that comfort food for me, the ones that really meant something in my childhood. I had those on my shelf so that I could revisit them at any time that I wanted and, and hold them in my hands and just celebrate their existence, basically. And I had an inkling at that time. I was like, I wonder if one day it would be possible for me to collect the entirety of the Shonen Jump line. But it was a fleeting thought that I didn't really stick with. Fast forward again to this summer, 2021, uh, I believe it was in June. I was sitting here in my library and I was kind of brainstorming about ideas for content. And I came up with the idea to make a video about all of the discontinued manga from Viz Media's Shonen Jump line. And I wanted to make that video so that I could talk about them, reminisce about them, and really because it's not very common that series get discontinued these days, and I wanted to talk about that to let people know about these titles and, and why there were not the complete run of each of these things like Gintama, Reborn, Strawberry 100% that actually existed. So the first thing I had to do was sit down and figure out what are all of the discontinued titles from that line. And the best way to do so is by process of elimination from a complete list of every series that's in the Shonen Jump line. The only problem is that a complete list of all the series doesn't exist. It does now, but it did not at the time, at least not readily for me to find online. So I started putting together the list, and the first thing I did was look on Viz Media's website because they have uh, basically a section of the website for each of their publishing lines. So Shoujo Beat, Shonen Jump, Shonen Sunday, Viz Signature, etc. And under those, uh, they have listed every single title that's in that line. Now I knew that they didn't have everything on there because a lot of those discontinued titles were not actually listed on the site. So I had to continue further with trying to find more information to, to make sure that I had a complete list of everything. Basically I went on Wikipedia and looked through every single series that was published in every single Shonen Jump magazine, like Weekly Shonen Jump, Monthly Shonen Jump, Ultra Jump, etc. And see if those titles were published in English. And then I listed all of those and I'm looking at the list and kind of eliminating stuff and saying like, all right, so here's, this one's complete, this one's complete, this one's still ongoing. And I found that there was the seven discontinued titles. And I made that video and it was a lot of fun. I had a ton of fun making it and a lot of people seem to have fun watching it. But while I was finishing gathering the information, I also realized that I had the majority of those titles that were on the list. I already owned them and that was probably like about 1300 volumes worth of manga in my collection which at the time was probably around 2500 volumes total 
Around 1,300 of them were from the Shonen Jump line. And so I started looking through the list and I'm like, well, let me cut out all the stuff that I already own. Let me eliminate all these titles and let me see which titles I don't own. I wonder how many there are, how many volumes, how many series are there that I don't already own. And I was very surprised to find that in total there were about 320 volumes that I didn't own. And that's that's a lot of material. 320 volumes is a lot of manga, but when compared to the amount that I already had, that like 1300, maybe 1400 volumes that were already in my collection, it was a pretty small fraction, I guess, a pretty small percentage of the entirety of the line. And I, I thought for a second, like, again, like I had thought several years ago, like, would it be possible for me to collect the entirety of the line? And I thought to myself, you know, I, I don't want to just collect everything for the sake of collecting everything. Like, I want to make sure that I'm actually interested in the stuff that I'm picking up. Um, and I looked through the stuff that was remaining, the stuff that I didn't have, and it was like three or four titles that I already partially owned that I had meant to, to catch up on. Stuff that I had sold previously out of necessity, uh, like needing space or needing money at the time, that I had planned on picking up again later on. Series that were on my list of series that I've been wanting to get into for a long time, but never, I didn't jump in at the beginning and I never had the chance to catch up with them yet. Even series that I had already read digitally via apps and stuff like that, but never owned physically. Most of the stuff that I didn't own was stuff that I was already planning on buying or interested in buying. And there were some things that I didn't know about, some things that I had never heard of, and I was like, well, these are interesting to me as well. And there was like a small amount, like maybe like a few series that I had no plans on picking up. And even then, those that I had no plans on picking up, when I looked into them, I was like, this sounds pretty interesting. I, I, I think I would actually like to read this at some point. And so I pondered again, is it, could I collect everything from the Viz Media Shonen Jump line? Should I? And it very quickly, I was like, I'm gonna do it. I, I am gonna try and do it. I'm gonna collect everything. I, I think it's possible, let's do it. And so I, I made my list. I had everything on a, a, a document on my phone in my notes. And I just started going through and seeing like, you know, what did I want to buy first? What did I want to cross off the list first of these remaining like 320 volumes? And I started off with completing the things that I had already owned part of. So that was like uh, Nura Rise of the Yokai Clan and Platinum End. And then from there, I also started eliminating basically from the shortest titles up to the longer ones. So there was stuff that had just like a single volume, two volumes, three volumes, four volumes. I started eliminating those uh, just so I could cross off the line items from the list so I could eliminate entire titles because it had that like sense of accomplishment if I eliminated an entire title you know and then I picked up the ones that had box sets available stuff like Bakuman and Rosario Vampire. Bakuman was a title that I had already read uh, digitally but I had never owned and Rosario Vampire was one of those titles that I had previously owned uh, but I had to sell out of necessity. So I eliminated those. Those were easy because they had complete box sets. And then from there, just like every month, I would slowly work on this stuff, try to stay within budget um, to, to buy whatever I could as I went forward. I would find out every once in a while, like, oh, this series is going to be a little bit harder to find. This one is really easy to get. Uh, this one's going to be nearly impossible to find. Now, as the months went forward, I, I really, I, I think I started, I made the list in June and then July, August, September, and October, I was eliminating things off at a really great pace. And it was exciting every single time I'd, I'd get a new series or I'd find something that was hard to find or I'd get something for a really great price and I could cross that off of my list. It was really exciting and I got down to the last like 14 volumes. And these were the, the troublemakers. These were the ones that were really hard to get. And, and this is when I finally revealed to my channel that I was, I was doing this, that this is why in my haul videos, which you can go back and watch from previous months to see like the order that I bought all this stuff in, um, that's why in my haul videos, I'd been buying so many things and so many things from the Shonen Jump line. And now I was gonna start having smaller hauls because I had come to the end of this list, except for the last like 14 books that I needed. And people like started reaching out to me to try and help me finish the collection, which I was completely surprised that that happened. 
um, but incredibly thankful at the same time. And so people reached out and were able to help me to track down the last like 14 volumes. It was like volumes of uh, Eyes, Kaguya-sama, Love is War, Nisekoi, Seraph of the End, and Reborn were the last chunk of volumes that I needed to get. And thanks to these people, I was able to do it. I was able to complete the set in late November and now finally able to make the video talking about the entire set of books. So that's kind of the how I did it and the why I did it. I did it because I love the Shonen Jump manga line. I have such a deep, nostalgic and emotional connection to these series. I grew up reading so many of these titles and even the newer ones, the ones that I was unfamiliar with or that I was familiar with but hadn't read yet, they still have that certain flavor to them that appeals to me on such a visceral and emotional level. And I was so happy to be able to do this. I was so happy that I was able to complete this collecting goal that had been like at the back of my mind for years, that I was able to fulfill these things that like buying these series that uh, that I didn't pick up when I was younger, the series that I had to pass on because I was 13, 14 when I started collecting and I didn't have unlimited funds. Um, it, it's like I, I feel like the younger version of myself, the 13-year-old version, the 15-year-old version, the 17-year-old version of myself, I can feel them like excited about this, happy about this, smiling about this as big as I am right now talking about it with you. So I hope that this explanation really does well to show you why I wanted to do this. And with that, thank you so much for listening to me on that. And I want to take you to, to look at everything. And I, I'll have put some B-roll over the things that I've been stating so that this, this video is not just me talking so you do get a little taste of uh, the series. But we're going to go ahead and take a look down the entirety of the line, every shelf that I have, so you can see that I do indeed have every series. Now, I want to clarify though, um, this is only the manga from the Shonen Jump line, so not like all the light novels. I don't have all of the uh, supplemental books and art books and stuff like that. I'd like to get those, and maybe that's something for later on that I'll collect as I go forward. But um, for now, this was just focused on the manga. And then also, I only have one version of each series, um, so I don't have like the variant covers, like the holographic ones or the hardcover editions. Um, and I don't have like, I know there's a bunch of variant covers for series like One Punch Man Volume 1 and My Hero Academia Volume 1. I just have one version of each book. And then in cases where like, for instance, you'll see I have Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, uh, the Vizbig editions. I don't have the three-in-ones or the single volumes. Uh, same goes for Death Note. I have the black edition, so I don't have the all-in-one and I don't have the single volumes. And then uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, I have the three-in-ones instead of having Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Duelist, and Millennium World in singles. So um, I, I don't really, I didn't really feel necessary to have multiple editions of the same title. Uh, over and over again. So just to clarify that stuff so you're not like, well, you don't have that one, you don't have that one. I, I, I'm aware I don't have all the special editions, I don't have all the limited editions and stuff like that. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a tour of every shelf so you can see every series that's in Viz Media Shonen Jump line. All right, so here are the shelves. Um, and I want to I wanna point something out first. The way I organize them, I have like larger books up at the top and then it goes into the um, the ongoing stuff or the titles that are on hiatus and then down here after world trigger that's where it then goes into concluded titles um, and there are a couple series that are non are not on these shelves and I will show those uh, as we go through this so Let's go ahead and take a look up at the top here. So starting at the top with the larger books, uh, The Revolutionary Girl, Utena, that's part of the Shoujo Beat line. But we've got All You Need Is Kill, Death Note 1 through 6, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z in the Viz Big Editions, and that goes into the Time Killers anthology. Uh, and then we've got Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5, Golden Wind. Now, like I said, this is where the ongoing stuff is. The rest of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is over on this shelf. Uh, this is my creator shelf, for those of y'all who are unfamiliar with my library. So over here I have a section for Araki's works, and that's where I have JoJo's parts 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
and then some of his stuff that's in Japanese, as well as a couple things of his that are in English, aside from JoJo's. Coming back over here, Seventh Garden, one through eight, that's on hiatus. Black Clover, the remainder of Black Clover is over here. Through 27. Blue Exorcist through 26. And keep in mind that this doesn't have any of the new releases from December, so there are some new books that are coming out that will be added in. Uh, Boruto, Burn the Witch, Chainsaw Man, D. Gray Man, 1 through 27. Dr. Stone, the reboot uh, Byakuya volume, and then the ongoing series, 1 through 19. Dragon Ball Z, that time I was reincarnated as Yamcha. Dragon Ball Super, Hunter Hunter. 1 through 36. Jujutsu Kaisen 0 and Jujutsu Kaisen uh, 1 through 12. Kaguya-sama Love is War volumes 1 through 20. Mashal, Moriarty the Patriot, My Hero Academia 1 through 29. Team Up Missions 1, Vigilantes 1 through 11. One Piece 1 through 7, One Punch Man, 1 through 23, Seraph of the End, 1 through 22, Spy Family, 1 through 6, Twin Star Exorcist, 1 through 23, Undead Unluck, 1 through 4, We Never Learn, 1 through 18, World Trigger 1 through 22, and that brings us into the concluded or discontinued titles. Act Age 1 and 2, Assassination Classroom 1 through 21, Astro Lost in Space 1 through 5, Bakuman 1 through 20, Barrage 1 and 2, Beat the Vandal Buster 1 through 12, Black Cat 1 through 20, Black Torch 1 through 5, Bleach Volumes 1 through there's 54, and then we go back down this way to 55 through 74, and I do have one of the light novels. Bobo Bo 1 and 1 through 5, Buso Rankin 1 through 10, Claymore 1 through 27, Kawa by Akira Toriyama, Demon Slayer 1 through 23, Dr. Slump 1 through 18, Dragon Drive 1 through 14, I, uh, I Shield 21, 1 through 37. Food Wars, 1 through 36. Ginkaku Picasso, 1 through 3. Gintama, 1 through 14. And then coming back down this way, 15 through 23. Gunblaze West, 1 through 3. Haikyuu, 1 through 45. Hikaru Nogo, 1 through 23. Oshinengi 1 through 23, Eyes 1 through 15, Jocko the Galactic Patrolman, Junitaizen uh, Zodiac War, Knights of the Zodiac or Saint Seiya 1 through 28, Kurohime 1 through 14, Kuroko's Basketball, there's 1 through uh, 10 of the 2 in 1s, and then the remaining 11 through 30. Are over here, Legends 1 through 4, Muyo and Roji 1 through 18, My Hero Academia uh, Smash 1 through 5, Naruto 1 through 72, as well as the uh, little epilogue volume that leads into Boruto and the Naruto Chibi Sasuke's Sharingan Legend series, Nisekoi 1 through 25. Nora, Last Chronicle of Deviledom, Volume 1 through 9. Nura, Rise of the Yokai Clan, Volumes 1 through 25. I'm walking on my knees now, so it's a little difficult. Uh, Platinum End, 1 through 13. And then I've left a space for 14, because that's the last volume. Pretty Face, 1 through 6. Siren, 1 through 12. And 13 through 16. Prince of Tennis, 1 through 42. Promised Neverland, 1 through 20. Raul Grodd, 1 through 4, Reborn, 1 through 16, Rosario Vampire, Part 1, 1 through 10, and Season 2, 1 through 14, 
Roni Kenshin 1 through 28 and Restoration 1 and 2, Samurai 8 1 through 5, Sandland, School Judgment 1 through 3, Shaman King 1 through 32, Strawberry 100% 1 through 14, and Tagami Bachi 1 through 17, and 18, 19, and 20, Toriko 1 through 43, Ultimate Muscle 1 through 29, Ultimo 1 through 12, Walk Walk 1 through 4, Whistle 1 through 24, Yu-Gi-Oh! the 3 in 1s, going all the way through to uh, volume 38, it's 13 3 in 1s. I also have the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie and a manga. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! R 1 through 5, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX 1 through 9, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds 1 through 9, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel 1 through 9, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Arc V 1 through 7, Yu Yu Hakusho 1 through 19, Zombie Powder 1 through 4, and then over here on the creator shelf again with all my Inoue stuff is Slam Dunk 1 through 31, my favorite series of all time. So there you go. That's that's it. That's everything. That's every volume, every series. And like I said while I was going in there, um, doesn't include the stuff that's coming out in December, but uh, I, I will, this is not a, a project that has an end. As long as the Shonen Jump line is continuing, it'll continue going, and I will be buying every new Shonen Jump manga that comes out from Viz every single month. So that means new upcoming titles like Kaiju Number no. 8, The Elusive Samurai, Sakamoto Days, uh, the Akira Toriyama Manga Theater volume that's coming out here. Uh, actually, I think some stores already have it. Continuing volumes of all the series that are currently coming out. I This is not a, an end point. This is like, I've caught up, basically. I collected everything to be caught up to this point, and now from here on, it's just staying caught up every month and continuing to buy all these series. So I know you might have uh, something that you wish that I would have talked about in this video, like what are my favorites, what are my least favorites, uh, talk about which ones specifically were the hardest ones to find, stuff like that, and that's where I want to ask you to give me feedback here. What topics about all of the Viz Media Shonen Jump titles would you like to know about? I do have some videos planned, such as the titles that were in the Weekly Shonen Jump magazine or in one of the Shonen Jump magazines in Japan that are under other lines or are published by other publishers in the US. Um, you know, I do plan on talking about my favorite of the titles under Shonen Jump. I do plan on talking about uh, different things like that, my least favorites of the titles and stuff like that. But I want to know from you, what would you like to hear about? I've got all these books here and I'm very passionate about them. And I have a lot of knowledge, not just on the stories themselves, but if you've become familiar with my channel, you know that I know a lot about the manga industry and a lot about the in and outs of the medium itself. And I'm very interested in talking continuously across many videos about the Shonen Jump line. So if there's anything in particular that you would be interested in hearing about, I want to know. Please comment down below and give me the feedback of what topics you would like me to cover in regards to the Shonen Jump line from Viz Media. So I hope that this was an entertaining video to watch, and I know typically my content is very informative and is meant to teach about certain topics revolving around manga or sometimes comics as well. Um, and I think that this one possibly could be as well, in that there are probably some series that are part of this line that people either didn't know existed, didn't know were part of the Shonen Jump line, uh, or, you know, something around there. And I'd like for you to comment down below if there was anything that you were not aware of existing. What series here did you not know about? What series uh, was something completely new to you? I'd like to know, because I know that there are a lot of titles here that are not on the Shonen Jump app, that are not on the Viz Media website. So a lot of people might not know about them, especially newer collectors and stuff. So let me know what you think. Let me know what's new uh, to you. Let me know what topics you'd like me to cover in future videos about the Shonen Jump line. Um, and again, thank you so much for watching. This this means a lot to me. I I hope that that came across in the entire like preamble type thing that I did for half of this video. Uh, I, I hope it came across how much this entire project, this entire uh, goal of mine, meant to me personally. So yeah, I, I hope uh, I hope that came across well. So yeah, thank you for for spending time with me watching this and and watching me kind of ramble on a little bit. I appreciate the support, I appreciate you spending the time with me, and I will see you all on the next one. Peace out.